Sup fam, welcome to the Reddit show. I'm your host, JF Kevin. Today we've got some great stories for you. And I think we might have the craziest Karen story of all time. So let's get started. Am I the jerk for not wanting to name our first child black? My partner and I are having our first child, yay. And I stupidly made a deal with them where they got to name our child if it's a boy and I got to name it if it was a girl. I know, I messed up. Well, we're having a boy, and the names my partner is coming up with are not for me. I've managed to convince them to forget the deal we made, so at least that element is gone. But this does still mean they seem to have a little more say than I do in the situation. Anyway, the name they are really eager to use is Black. We both want something a bit different without being too hippy-dippy, and this is the outcome. Their reasoning is something along the lines of colors as names are already a thing, like violet or blue and black is just a really cool color. They just think it sounds cool, really. However, I think it's a bit odd as we're both white. It just seems to me like, yeah, it's a color, but it's also more than that. It's a race, and race is a pretty sensitive topic. They think that this is crazy logic, that it has nothing to do with race, and making it about race is absurd. By the way, we're not American, so race isn't quite as huge of a deal like it is over there. Just to clarify, we will not name our child anything we don't both agree on, but this conversation has now become more about whether or not the name is just a color or something more charged, and neither of us can really see the other's perspective. Am I the jerk? Yeah, OP, you are totally not the jerk in this scenario. Uh, I, I mean, you're just looking at it with a little bit of intelligence. I think your partner needs to just kind of, you know, use his noggin here and, and think about what a problematic name that would be. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're living in the States or not. What if your son wants to move to the States? It, it won't go over well. Oh, man. That's... <laughs> wow. Okay. That time when three girls ordered martinis. I moonlight as a bartender, filling in now and then, or coming in when there is a really big crowd expected. The places I work are smoky dive bars, as in bottled beer, whiskey, and Coke. Blue bomb kind of places. I don't do swanky cocktail bars. One of the places I fill in is a union bar. It's tucked back in a strip mall between a Hispanic grocery store and a laundromat. Mostly union workers and people who work for a nearby aerospace company. Very laid back crowd. Well, one evening I was working when the door opened and three girls wander in. Now, picture a bunch of old men in coveralls, work boots, and ball caps sitting at the bar watching a football game under a cloud of smoke. Now, picture three barely 21-year-old girls in sky-high heels, skin-tight dresses, hair all done, tons of makeup, toddling in. My first thought was, oh, they must be lost. The swanky bars are in the other direction. Then I thought, well, maybe their car broke down? Nope. They were here to party, whooping it up, taking selfies, duck faces all around. In a union bar. They start by ordering martinis. Again in a union bar. But okay, I know how to make them, so I just ask for their ID, which I rarely have to do here. They're all just over 21. Then I have to go see if we even had three martini glasses. So I ask them if they have a gin preference. Surprise us. Okay, fine. I shake up three martinis, extra olives, and bring them down to them. What's that? Martinis. Those are martinis? We've had martinis. What ensues is an argument about what a martini is. I ask them if they're sure they weren't talking about some kind of flavored martini like an apple teeny. No, they were positive it was a regular martini. I finally ask them to describe it to me. It's in a big glass with lime and salt on the rim. Margaritas. These airheads wanted margaritas. So I make three margaritas, and they got mad because I served them in pint glasses because we definitely did not have three margarita glasses. They pouted, drank them, and left. It was probably one of my more bizarre encounters. So this is a funny story to me because this is literally, I used to bartend, and I've literally had this happen to me. I had a server keep sending back uh, a, a, a martini. And finally, I got kind of fed up, so I went over to the table and I was like, hey, like, what is, what, how am I making your martini wrong? And they literally described a margarita. I'm not making this up. This literally happened to me. So this story has a very special place in my heart and I, I find it kind of weird. I wonder if it was like the same, same people. All right, fam, before our last story, 
which I'm gonna warn you is a little long, but it is insane. We're gonna hear about a Karen with a gun here in a couple moments. But before we do that, just do me a favor, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, maybe leave us a comment letting us know what your favorite story is. But now it's time for the grand finale. Psycho entitled parent breaks into a house, holds a girl at gunpoint, and then lies to the police. Okay, first, this didn't happen to me, but a friend of mine, so I'm writing it in the third person as I heard it. Second, I know how fake this title sounds, but she showed me security footage of the event that transpired, and yup, it was real. It actually happened. So basically, let me set the stage. I'm gonna be using fake names to protect the identities, of course, so here's our cast. The person it happened to, Elizabeth. Her mother, Christina. The entitled parent, Karen, and the entitled teen, Darren. This happened around four years ago. Basically, Christina had a computer that she let her neighbor's kid use from time to time as long as Christina was there to watch them. If she was gone, then she would tell Elizabeth, who was either 16 or 17 at the time, that they weren't allowed to use the computer. But usually if Christina wasn't home, neither was Elizabeth. Now here's some key information. Before they went out, they would always lock their front door. But at one point, they started thinking that they were forgetting to lock their front door. So one day, Elizabeth was actually home alone because Christina was at work, and they don't allow kids at the hospital that she worked at, and Elizabeth was on vacation, so she didn't have any school. She hears a knock on the door and answers it. Who's there? It's Karen and her demon spawn, Darren. This is the conversation that follows. Hello, Darren wants to use your computer. Karen began. Sorry, but my mom's not home right now. Come by later and see if she's home then. I know she said we're not allowed to use the computer if she's not here, but you're here, so you can watch us. I'm sorry, but my mom said I cannot let you in. Come on, your mom doesn't have to know, Darren added. I'm sorry, but no means no, and I don't want to get in trouble if mom comes home and he's still planning on it. Just come by later. Karen let out this exasperated groan and just dragged Darren away. Now you would think that this would be the end of it, but you saw the title. We still have three criminal charges to get to. So about 10 minutes later, Elizabeth hears the door open and thinks it's her mom coming home early from work or something. But when she goes downstairs to say hi, she's instead greeted with Karen going from one to a hundred and pointing a gun at her. Here's what follows. You're going to let my angel play on your computer now. Elizabeth, keeping her arms up and trying to de-escalate the situation, Calm down, okay? Just put the gun down and, and take your kids to the computer. Now, they later found out that that gun wasn't actually loaded and actually belonged to Karen's husband, who, by the way, divorced her once he found out what she did. But when someone's pointing a gun at you, you don't really want to call their bluff. Elizabeth did try to retreat to her bedroom, but Karen grabbed her. I'm not done with you, brat. Where do you keep your duct tape? This is around the point I thought she was making this story up, but she ended up showing me the security camera footage. I watched Elizabeth show Karen where the duct tape was, and Karen, I kid you not, tied Elizabeth to a chair and taped her mouth shut. She said it was hours before her mom showed up, and by then, Karen and Darren were gone. Elizabeth and her mom called the police immediately, and when they confronted Karen about it, she said this. Well, you see, officer, that's my house. They're just renting it. Yep. She bald-faced lied to the police. All it took was showing them the security footage and she was then charged with breaking and entering, making a terroristic threat by pointing a gun at Elizabeth, and wrongful imprisonment. I don't remember what happened to Darren, but I think he was put in juvenile detention since he was only 16. It honestly astonishes me how psychotic this entitled parent was that she felt it was worth it to break in and hold a young teenage girl at gunpoint just so her kid could use a freaking computer? I wish I was making this up because this is insane. See fam, I told you, that's a crazy story. I don't even think I've ever even heard or read a story about a Karen that crazy. That's like a new level of crazy Karen, but who knows, you know what? I bet probably tomorrow there'll be like some something crazier that some, some crazy Karen's gonna do. Anyway, that's gonna be it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed and uh, oh yeah, cue the music. That's all for today. Bye. Oh yeah, don't forget to click on a playlist or something.